Hello, this is Tov from Trifro Productions with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how to use or actually how to create really unique skies or detailed skies using the Pure Sky add-on. Now I've had the, or I've used the old version of the add-on and this is pretty much night and day. This version, the latest version, it works a whole lot better than the previous versions. The previous versions were just heavy on your system, they lagged, uh, took a long time to render render them out. Uh, but with this version of the add-on, it's a whole lot faster, a whole lot smoother, a whole lot easier. And the latest version uses uh, 3.4, that's what I'm using right now, I think it's 3.4 and 3.5. But I'll leave a link of it uh, below this video so you can download yourselves and check it out. And the installation is still the same. Go to Edit, Preferences, uh, add-ons, uh, install, navigate to where you've downloaded it onto your system, click on install add-on, and once you've done that, let me type in pure, uh, put check in the box and it's ready to go. Uh, one thing I've seen too that you need to have uh, blenders, uh, I think it's like the sun, yeah the sun position, lighting, uh, it uses that too, so put a check in that box too to activate that if it's not already activated on your system. And then you're ready to go. Now, as I said before, with this add-on, it'll be on the right side of your user interface, which is in the tool panel here. And it has Pure Sky Pro 6 for Cycles and Pure Sky Pro 5 for EV. We're just going to focus on uh, Cycles right now so I can really show you how efficient it is now because it renders really fast in the viewport. And when you change it, it automatically changes it to cycles when you turn it, uh, when you use the Pure Sky 6. And we're going to change this because I want you guys to see something here really interesting. We're going to turn this to cycles rendering aspect of it. And turn this to GPU compute. And when I click on Pure Sky Pro 6, I want you to look at this, uh, look at the parameters here and see how they change to make the add-on a lot more efficient. Hopefully it's not going to crash the computer, but if it takes a little bit too long, I'll skip some parts so you can see how it looks. Pure Sky on Pro 6, and there we go. That was pretty fast, and it didn't even, didn't even crash the system. That's uh, pretty nice. But if you look at the parameters over here, and the viewport aspect of it, it turned the samples down to 10. 10. Before, I think this was like, 1026 this was like 4000 and something but it turned it down so that it wouldn't tax your system and it still looks fine and this is in cycles now from the beginning uh, when you first start or activate the add-on it's going to give you just the basic blender viewport when it comes to the sky and we're going to just focus on these settings here because there are a lot of settings but we're going to just focus on the cloud creation uh, so you can see how it operates and how it works inside of Blender fairly quickly. Now you have a lot of presets for the sky. Click on that to give you a lot of thumbnails. And let's click on uh, let's click on that one and click on apply. And it changes because this changes the sky color, it doesn't add clouds to it. It just changes the color of the sky. And look how fast that happens. It just did its this is like extremely fast compared to the other versions and if you want to get rid of this guy and add another one you just click on reset it changes it back to the original default sky blender you can click on the thumbnails again and choose another one it's got like I guess like 30 kinds of sky it's got day sky and night sky let's click on this one click on apply and it's done now we're going to minimize that and go to the cloud presets and it's got low-level clouds, mid-level clouds, and high-level clouds. And let's start off with the low-level clouds. Those are the ones that are closer to the ground surface. Let's click on that. We have thumbnails here also. It's got about 40 different kinds of uh, clouds, low-level clouds. And let's click on this one and click apply to that. And our clouds come up. It's taking a little bit longer to render this out because it's trying to create the, the clouds. But still, that's pretty fast still. That's really that's less than 10 seconds that it's just rendered these clouds out. And let's uh, 
zoom out for a little bit so we can see the clouds on the horizon there. See how they're forming it. And the clouds come out smooth. It's denoising everything properly. There are no fireflies during the final render. It lo looks great. Let's minimize this and go to the mid-level clouds. Click on that. Now you can see that the if you look through the cloud formations or cloud thumbnails, they're all the same when it comes to the different categories. But that's no problem because you can mix and match different aspects of the sky. Uh, let's click on this one, <clears throat> or the clouds I mean. Click on Apply. And now we have these streaks of clouds going across the sky, which also looks nice. See all those clouds in the uh, distance there? That also looks nice. So that's, it's, it's, it's a really, they've really improved this thing quite a bit. Uh, let me, let's change the, the sky color for a second. Well, let's, let's get in our high, high level clouds first, and then we'll change the color of the sky. So you can see the clouds a little bit better. Let's click on that thumbnail. And let's, uh, let's click on the, I think the Cyrus Spisatus. I don't know if that's pronounced properly, but uh, let's just go with that. And click on apply with that also. And even though we've add like, added like three levels of clouds to uh, our viewport, it's still rendering in the viewport pretty fast. It's already at six samples, seven, eight, and we're gonna get up to 10, I'm assuming. And at 10, it's done. And then we'll minimize this and go to the sky presets and change the color of the sky to something a little bit brighter to distinguish the background from the foreground clouds. Let's click on this one and click apply. There we go, that, that, sh that makes the clouds stand out a lot more. So we've got that. And I'm still just impressed by the, uh, the, the efficiency and, and the, the quickness uh, where it's like rendering extremely fast. I mean, I've got a pretty decent Alien laptop uh, that I'm working with, but this is still something that's pretty phenomenal. And then it's got fog presets. Here, you can click on that, it's got thumbnails there. You can add fog to it. Uh, let's go with uh, atmospheric fog and click on apply to that. And you can see that the fog starts to settle in on our scene here, on our sky scene. Let's give that a second to render out. Um, you have experimental fog there too. You can try that out. And even with uh, the level of cloud formation, the level of clouds or the amount of clouds you can apply, you can still, it still has more presets or more uh, parameters to it that you can change. Now let's minimize the fog presets here. You can change the quality of the scene overall to low, medium, or high. Increase this, decrease the steps. Um, still adjust the viewport samples from here, which is great. You can adjust the time of day. That's why you need to activate the uh, the sun aspect of blend so you can uh, deal with the, or change the time in terms of the sun angle, uh, the time zone, uh, night, day, so on and so forth. Uh, time of the year, you can use, actually use your own, uh, the current dates and time for today to get more accurate results when it comes to the overall look of the sky, which is great. You can animate it, but one thing that I've seen with this is when you click on uh, click on this arrow here, it gives you presets for animating the sky so that when the wind blows, because you can see, when you look up at the sky uh, and the wind blows up at that level, it moves the clouds. And that's what this is supposed to simulate, this right here. Only thing is when you click on it, it doesn't seem to change any of the parameters uh, you click on the presets it's got like a good amount of presets I think about 23 um, if we look at all the presets here when you when we change this the presets here is supposed to change the presets here of the parameters here click on the presets click on that and click apply and nothing happens I don't know why that is I probably have to contact the developer to ask them uh, how to use the presets for this but that's no problem because all you would have to do is pretty much just click in any parameter here, let's say wind direction, hover over that, 
let's uh, let me change the viewport here. Well, we can leave the viewport as is. Uh, we can pull this up so we can see our timeline here. Uh, let's say the render direction here at one. Hover our mouse over here and click on our keyboard. Click I. That gives us a keyframe. Put it on sixty, and you can increase this to probably five. Enter and I again, and that's how I can animate all of these presets here uh, for the the wind, so it can affect the movement of the clouds and the sky and things like that. So yeah, it has surface in terms of changing the parameters or changing the look of the sky even further down here uh, with all these parameters down here. The same thing for um, HDRI, can add, uh, you can add an HDRI image to it also if you wanted to, which is cool. So there's like no limits basically to what you can do when it comes to this add-on and changing the parameters and look of the sky uh, for the Pure Sky add-on. And like I said before, they have done a really good job with making improvements to this add-on and it's just impressed me quite a bit. So yeah, this is today's uh, Blender Quick Tip, which is using the Pure Sky add-on to really customize the skies in Blender to your liking. And it doesn't take a long time to render this out at all. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping that this tutorial, this uh, introduction to this add-on was helpful for those of you watching. And once again, thank you guys who have subscribed in the past, those of you who are subscribing now, and those of you who will subscribe in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.